We've got the whole crew together as we cover Ohio State with our instant analysis from Ohio State. There's something that doesn't feel right. Unbelievable effort from him today. Is EJ Liddell going to crack the first team all Big Ten? I think he can be the guy. I'm not trying to start a quarterback controversy. He seems to have the durability. He certainly has the toughness. This is the question on a lot of people's minds here. Welcome to Buckeye Breakdown. Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to Buckeye Breakdown on Tuesday, September 13th. I'm Brendan Gulick along with Craig Heisen, and it is uh, Tuesday of Ohio State versus Toledo week as the Buckeyes get ready for week three of the uh, 2022 season. Craig, this is kind of a a combo pod, Um, sort of a, you know, what we learned from Ohio State from this past weekend, and also we're going to hear from Ryan Day at 12 noon. (laughs) Uh, with his weekly press conference. And so part of this is going to be on what you what you hope to learn. So what you learned from last weekend and what you hope to learn today when uh, we have a chance to speak with Ryan Day, as well as Jim Knowles uh, and C.J. Stroud this afternoon. So that's uh, that's kind of the focus. How was your weekend? It was great. Had a little golf trip down in SEC country. So oh boy, uh, things were buzzing in the clubhouse when uh, Alabama was on the ropes there at the end of the game. <laughs> you know, that's uh, that's a that's a perfect segue, because one of the things I really want to learn from Coach Day uh, is how pleased he is with the level of detailed preparation, through, you know, with this team through the first couple of games. Uh, and we can dive into that uh, in a bit. But I, I uh, you know, college football, it's funny, the, the week two schedule is never particularly riveting. And yet we almost always look back on it and go, gosh, that was actually a lot better schedule than we thought, you know, and, and it certainly helps when there's a bunch of, of chaotic upsets with Marshall beating Notre Dame, App State beating Texas A&M, Texas almost obviously uh, pulling that off against Alabama, Wisconsin lost to Washington State um, on a smaller level, you know, uh, Eastern Kentucky, who's an FCS program beats an FBS program in Bowling Green in a wild seven overtime game. Um, maybe there's a little more parity in college football this year than, than we thought. I don't know so much about the top, uh, top of the top teams, you know, Ohio state certainly has looked really good through their first couple games and, and Georgia's looked really good. Maybe Texas is a little bit better than we thought. I guess we'll find out as, as time goes along. Um, but I, I have to admit, I feel after watching back the Ohio State Arkansas State game, I actually feel a little bit better than I did in real time um, because our reaction, you know, when Andrew and I did our instant analysis show, I, I actually I was a little frustrated with the way that that game went, not because it wasn't a good win. It was a good win. It wasn't a great win. And uh, I think that was my biggest reaction in the moment. And I, after watching back on it, I, I actually feel a little bit better about the game. And just like you said, Brendan, it was, it was a good win. It wasn't great. There's still the penalties is what's kind of irking me still. I mean, they have 17 penalties and some of these have been declined in the first two games for 160 yards. So we saw with Alabama uh, last Saturday, they didn't have any turnovers but they had 15 for 100 uh, for penalties. And that almost did them in in the end. Did they play great? No. But uh, <laughs> Coach Saban pointed to those penalties first thing after the game and just how sloppy they were. So especially the controllable ones, the unsportsmanlike conducts, um, having penalties that take touchdowns off the board, especially I know you were definitely excited for that special teams touchdown that we talked about. Uh well. I think you said that was going to happen to you, right last Saturday. So you're on, on Tuesday. On. I said it was going to happen, and you know, and and then I, I even said in the post game, like I'm not going to hang my hat too hard on it because maybe that happened because of the bad block in the back. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean, I I didn't think Arkansas State special teams unit looked particularly good week one, even in their blowout, and they didn't have to punt against our or against Grambling State. Um, I just kind of had a sneaking feeling the Buckeyes were going to be able to take one back and and they did, but you know, they were actually two penalties on the play. Yep. Fantastic call by you. And and those penalties, the controllable ones, and then also who is committing these penalties. Like they're, it's been some of the guys that you wouldn't expect, like, um, Mitchell jumping over the, the, uh, the the hedge of the, for the punter. I mean, stuff that you should know, you know, 
uh, veteran player on the team. So hopefully this week against Toledo, it's a cleaner game. I mean, obviously there's going to be penalties, but minimizing those as much as possible um, and just having a little bit better flow um, to the game as well. I guess we bounce around a little bit here because the, the biggest question I wanted to ask Jim Knowles was sort of about his appetite for some of those kinds of penalties. You know, I, with a defense that is so aggressive, I wonder if he's willing to live with a, a couple of smaller penalties a game because there were several, you know, defensive offsides penalties uh, in, in week two here. Not so many in, in week one. Week one, it felt more like false start penalties. Dewan Jones had a tough game. Um, so I, I'm going to ask Coach Knowles today if, if, uh, if I'm called on. I certainly hope I will be, but I'm going to ask Coach Knowles about you know, look, I, is there a is there a balance between, you know, hey, we want to be ultra aggressive and give these guys this really attack mindset? Um, are you trying to balance that with maybe being willing to accept the fact that you might jump once or twice during a game? Now, you can't jump four times. Um, and and look, the the unsportsmanlike conduct personal foul penalties are unacceptable on both sides of the ball for sure. Um, and, and you know you you practice what you preach, uh, and I'm sure that this team is is going to get an earful this week about that kind of stuff. You just can't have penalties like that. Um, but you know, again, I, I feel better about this because. Largely week two looked pretty good. You know, mm -hmm. Marvin Harrison had a ridiculous game. CJ Stroud had a very, very good game. I really thought he only made truly one ill advised throw, and it was actually the first one of the game uh, that I thought should have been intercepted. Um, but man, he threw the ball in some really, really tight windows. The third touchdown catch for Marvin Harrison Jr. was spectacular, uh, both throw and catch. Um, I'd like to see the Buckeyes run it a little bit more, but I'm just being a little nitpicky, I guess, with that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, all things considered, offensively, they they kind of did what we thought. They had two drives that, you know, ended up in three and outs that kind of irritated you, but the game wasn't really, you know, that tight, um, especially late, so you, you kind of got over that quickly. So I, 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 I do feel better about, um, where they stand after watching back on it. Yeah, defense much improved. One touchdown through two games uh, last year, I think it was was nine. So Jim Knowles, the early return on Jim Knowles is certainly there. So, but uh, to your point before, I'm also interested in the answer to that question. If you get the opportunity to ask that today, is is he okay with uh, with a couple uh, penalties on the defense? I mean, you're going to have you never want a targeting call, but um, I mean, if, if he's preaching fast, tough, there's going to be some hits that are that are there. That um, is he okay with with some certain penalties? So uh, eager to hear his answer on that one. I, I'm also going to ask Coach Day about you know kind of evaluating how prepared he thinks his backup players are through two weeks compared to what he hoped they would be through two weeks because he really didn't play any depth uh, outside a defensive line in week one. Um, and the game didn't really dictate being able to play some depth until very late in the game uh, in week two. So, you know, I don't know what their, what their hopes and plans were and how those matched up with reality. You know, you have to play the game the way that it unfolds. And so you can't, you can't pull your starters before you you're ready to do that. Um, but I, I just, there's a part of me that wonders if he wishes, you know, Ohio state wouldn't have, wouldn't have had a really weird three and out, uh, in the final minute after Mike Hall comes up with the big sack and the, you know, the end of the first half and the Buckeyes have a very short field and timeouts and they couldn't score, you know, if they score there and score to open the second, uh, the second half, you know, maybe you can put you know, your, your next group of guys in there, just things like that. It was, it was a little, it was just a little off from where they could have had that killer instinct and just buried Arkansas state. 
Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm curious if, you know, if they had to turn to Caden Curry in, you know, more of a pinch, if they had to put Chip Traynham at linebacker, if J.K. Johnson is forced to play more corner because Denzel Burke has not had a very good start to the season. Um, you know, if you get an injury at a key spot on the offensive line and, um, you know, we think we know what those first couple guys in the offensive line room are going to be, but uh, we finally got a chance to basically see the full second team offensive line last week. I just want to know how he how he uh, views the preparation uh, right now for those guys to know that, like, no, if we put in a guy who doesn't see a lot of time, we're, we're going to not miss a beat kind of thing. Caden Curry was one of the guys we talked about uh, leading up to – uh, Notre Dame game that we were excited, just kind of a preview pod for new guys. And man, did he look good when he was in there on Saturday. So I'd love to see him get in uh, a little bit more in the second half. Hopefully the opportunity presents itself this Saturday. I think Toledo will be uh, a little bit of a more formidable opponent than Arkansas State. So hopefully they can uh, crank it up on offense and get those guys in there. Because uh, the, throughout the season, there's going to be injuries that come up. You're going to have to rely on different guys. So it's crucial to get be able to get them in there. And if I'm Coach A, I'm thinking this week, you saw how crazy last Saturday was in the upsets. Like This year, you can't take anybody for granted. I don't know, and this is something we probably won't find out, but maybe somebody asks it across the country, is some of these smaller teams that might not have these NIL deals that these big schools have, is that playing a role in lighting a fire a little bit more under these small smaller schools when they go in and play these big teams? Like, hey, look at these guys. They're – these guys are making a couple million bucks, have all these deals. You think you're a pretty good player. Um, you want to show it on the big stage. And and now with the transfer portal being is what it is, you're kind of uh, on a job interview almost when you're when you are one of those smaller, smaller school teams. Um, hopefully the big school notices you in that big game and you're, you're grad, grad transferring over there or, or figuring another way to get there. So. Yeah, I don't know if it plays a, a part, but it, it's awfully ironic that all these big upsets are happening uh, this early. Well, and, and I mean, you think about a program like App State. They're good, man. They, like, this mm-hmm. isn't just a flash in the pan, you know. And, and I mean, in Big Ten country, nobody will ever forget what they did 15 years ago um, when they obviously knocked off Michigan in the big house. But – they they should have, in my opinion, they should have beaten North Carolina in week one here. Crazy they, game. They go to one. Texas A&M and beat the Aggies in, in week two. And by the way, most ignorant thing I saw on social media this week, and I don't even think it was close, did you see the Texas A&M students pregame pep rally? Before I did see that. Out of state? I mean, <laughs> I they said that. the dumbest, most ignorant things you could possibly think of about App State, mm-hmm. and I was thoroughly enjoying watching all of the "you got to be kidding me" looks on on the faces of their student section. I mean, just I'm sure it was all in good fun, but I don't know. I thought they crossed the line, <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, so I thought it was great that App State stuck it to them. Uh, and it's amazing, you know. Think about Jimbo Fisher. Last year, he is king of the world. Beats mm-hmm. Alabama. Life is good. I know they didn't make the playoff, but you know, it, you beat Alabama in College Station. You got everybody buying in. And this year, you know, they lose to a non-power five conference school at home that everybody was like, who the heck is this team from, you know, the Mountaineers from the foothills of North Carolina? And they stuck it to them. Mm-hmm. I loved it. It's the best part about college football, man. I, I love <laughs> that. Is. Um I just want to ask one question before we wrap up here because it's it's been on my mind a little bit. How concerned are you with our secondary? Denzel Burke's start to the season is definitely uh, concerning. I don't know if there's an injury there, but he certainly does not look like the player he was last year. Um, and if he's not going to be that guy, somebody needs to step up. Um, I don't know. There's obviously competition in that room. I don't know and can't speak for him, but it, did he, was it one of those things where he maybe got too comfortable? He's like, Hey, I got this starting job. Like there's no way any of these guys take my spot and something's slipping up getting ready for games wise or, or yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't he certainly know. doesn't I mean, look like he did last year. You know, I, we've seen him working before practice. So I, I don't think it's a laziness thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and to his credit, 
he's made some pretty good plays this these first couple of weeks. He's just also made some really poor decisions uh, that have been costly. A couple of bad pass interference calls, one of which was declined this past weekend. Um, by the way, because of a ridiculous catch. Um, <laughs> the, the tight end who was playing more wide receiver, you know, mm-hmm. Burke puts his arms up to, to block the pass, never turns to look for the ball. It was a clear cut PI. And, and the kid catches the ball with one arm, like around Denzel's mm-hmm. back. It was mm-hmm. awesome. Um, you know, between that and, and it's just a few, I, I don't know if he got a bad read or got flat footed. He got burned a couple mm-hmm. of times and I, he just I don't really remember him getting flat out beat like that last year um you know we said all week man Arkansas State wasn't a bad team I thought they were going to get smoked at the line of scrimmage and that's where they struggled but their skill position players are pretty good when they got the ball out on the perimeter those guys weren't bad Champ mm-hmm. Fleming's had a really good day um you know, Lang, I, I thought Lang could run the ball fine. They just couldn't run between the tackles. Um, and and Blackman's clock was getting sped up big time because it couldn't they couldn't block for him. You know, it was within one second he had to get rid of the ball. And that's it's a really hard way to run an effective offense against a, a defense playing the way Ohio State's is. Um, so I'm I'm not surprised that the game got, you know, to the point that it did last week. I thought it was gonna be a little bit better of an offensive performance for Ohio state. Um, but it was largely pretty darn good. Uh, you know, my final score prediction ended up being 11 points short, but I thought we were going to have a special teams touchdown and uh, we had one that was called back. So it was, uh, it was in the same ballpark for sure. Real quick scale of one to 10. How concerned are you on Denzel Burt through two games? Five. Um, I, I, I don't think you can ignore it. I'm not sounding the alarm bells yet. Um, I would still start him against Toledo, but I mean, you know, I I was actually encouraged by the fact that he got pulled early in the Mm -hmm. second quarter and and they put JK Johnson in who played fine, by the way. Um, Now I realized, you know, there was a fumble late in the game, but that was at a point where the game was over. Um, you know, look, Denzel knows he's got to be better. The coaching staff knows he's got to be better. And we're still at a fairly low stress point in the season. Um, nobody's going to say that out loud, but the Buckeyes aren't worried about losing to Toledo. They're going to get a decent, te- you know, a decent test, but they're not going to lose to Toledo. Um, so I, I think Denzel's got a little bit of time to try to get this right. But in these first couple games, for whatever reason, Opposing offenses have been throwing his direction intentionally. They've been thrown away from Cam Brown. So I want to see how that continues because Cam Brown has looked pretty good so far on on the other side. Um, I am moderately concerned, but not, uh, you know, full-blown sound the alarm bell quite yet on uh, Mm -hmm. on Denzel. All right, so that'll wrap up uh, sort of what we learned and what we want to hear uh, on this uh, this Tuesday morning. Tomorrow morning, we've got a special guest for you. Ryan Cavanaugh is going to join us. Ryan uh, is a, a uh, color commentator for ESPN. He does some college football for them. And he actually had the Toledo game week one. Uh, and on top of that, Ryan's a good friend, and he's he's a really, really good dude. Um, he's got some good insight on Toledo. So we're going to, much like we did last week, where we kind of talked with Joshua Perry about Arkansas State, we're going to talk with Ryan Cavanaugh to get the latest on what's going on with Jason Candle and the Toledo Rockets out of the Mid-American Conference. In the meantime, you can find this podcast wherever you like to get your favorite episodes. You can find it on the uh, Apple Store, Google Play, Spotify. Uh, it's published in, uh, in lots of different places. We would love it if you subscribe to the YouTube channel. That would be awesome. We appreciate the support there. And for all the latest news and info on the Buckeyes, head to Buckeyesnow.com. For Craig Heisen, I'm Brendan Gulick. Have a great Tuesday. We'll stream Ryan Day's press conference coming up here at 12 noon, and we'll have a Buckeye report afterwards to tell you what we thought about what we heard from the Woody. Have a good morning.